Welcome back to Cards of Comics. Today I am coming live at you from the Room of Doom in my basement, surrounded by collectibles and uh, in my safe space for me to pontificate about things that only uh, a few of us care about tremendously, such as Cards and Comics. Now, today I want to talk to you about um, a topic that um, I've been thinking about a little bit since the National was over, and that is, you know, the National Hangover. Like, what do you do after the National? Because it's sort of, you know, a big event. You kind of, for me anyway, I put a lot of effort into acquiring some big cards. That meant I had to liquidate a lot of cards to, to pay for it and to, to trade for it. And so what do you do afterwards? Because it's hard to go from buying, um, you know, these big like T206 Ty Cobb cards by trading for them and, and doing some financial transactions and going back to buying the $200, you know, cards I normally buy. <laughs> so um, there is a little bit of a hangover. Now, to answer that question, I'm going to go actually to some videos I did earlier, which is my hobby predictions and just kind of see how they came about so far. And also my hobby collecting goals to see where I'm at, because I think the remainder of the year, I can focus on some hobby goals. I've not really paid attention to too much. I haven't uh, really um, did what I said I was going to do from collecting standpoint. So maybe I can refocus and I'm going to go through these. Now I haven't gone through these videos since I posted them. So it's going to be kind of a new refresher for me just to see like, how accurate was I in my predictions and then how far away from my collecting goals am I at? <clears throat> am I at right now? Now, before I get into it, I want to do a few things. Uh, one is a personal update. You know, um, my, um, you know, I have stated in the past, you know, it's very uncomfortable being on camera for a long time. And in fact, that's why I hadn't done lives and uh, a lot of, you know, um, you know, face videos for a long time. Uh, in fact, I think I went over a year maybe before I, I showed, you know, um, uh, did a live stream where I showed my face. Um, so, you know, uh, maybe close to two years actually, um, thinking about it now. Um, so yeah, that, um, you know, a lot of reasons for that. One is, um, you know, yeah, I lost a lot of weight, um, you know, uh, in the last starting around 2018, 2019, um, you know, I was close to like, you know, 300 pounds. Um, and so, you know, I got down to about like 185, you know, um, going through diets and exercise. Um, and then I gained a little bit of weight back and that's really where I got very comfortable, um, you know, being on camera again, because it's hard to, you know, lose a lot of weight and then gain some back and see yourself in that way. Now I'm back on my diet, you know, the, the standard, you know, the way I know it works for me, um, you know, and I'm back to exercising somewhat and I'm trying to get more into that. So I'm really getting back on that track again. COVID was a little bit of a, of a downer for, for depression around, you know, dieting and just, you know, the, the, the COVID uh, malaise. So, you know, I know it's, you know, blaming stuff, but you know, that's the truth. You know, I got off of it. I didn't really get off of hundred percent, but I wasn't on it hundred percent. And, you know, if you're in between anyone who knows this, you know, um, for me, sugar is the enemy, you know, and if you're not watching what you're doing, you just kind of slowly start gaining things back. And so, you know, I, I end up putting, you know, weight back on and now I'm trying to get it back down off again. Um, but I feel a lot better cause I am on the diet and I feel like, you know, it's, it's working. So hopefully, uh, you know, continue in that direction. So that's why you'll be seeing hopefully more live streams um, and my face on more videos and, and I am getting more confident in that. Um, so if anyone wants to comment about, you know, their own journey on that side of it, you know, I'll be more than happy to share my own adventure if it's interesting to you. Um, you know, it, it's hard to go, you know, when you lose over a hundred pounds, um, you know, it's hard to go back and, and, and gain some back. And it's really, really uh, disappointing as a person, you know, as a, as an individual uh, to backtrack some. And I think, cause you put so much effort into it and then, and then to, to lose some ground. So that's why I was very uh, uncomfortable for a long period of time. The video that I really 
put out there that really got me over that was the video I did where I was talking about uh, negativity in the hobby and made the little skit about Jeff's video. Um, that's the first time I really put myself out there on a camera, uh, big time. So from then on, I got a little more confidence, but I'm still not, you know, still really not into it, <laughs> so to speak. So, um, but yeah, that's where I'm at. Um, you know, just to give you guys some personal, you know, updates, you know, where I'm at personally from how I want to do content on the channel. And so I will be doing more lives and I'll announce those, um, you know, a day before. Uh, I go live that way, you know, if you, if you're interested in, in tuning in, I'll try to get more guests. Um, you know, I had uh, New York Yank fan seven on, uh, in my first uh, live with a guest and I, I thought it went really well. And I'm going to try to get a few other folks on that. I feel like are great, uh, collector content, uh, cause I like to focus on collector content. Uh, so moving on, there's a few things I want to talk about besides just, you know, the update I'm going to talk about one is, you know, um, you know, for everyone who knows me, you know, my content. I'm a huge Sandman fan, and Sandman's out now. Um, I'm a big fan of the character Death. So, you know, I've seen the first four, uh, four or five, I think four episodes. I think I'm on episode five, 24-7. I haven't watched 24-7 yet because 24-7 is one of the pivotal and most important episodes in, in the entire um, Sandman, you know, storyline. It, and not from just everything that happens, but from um, a um, importance to comic books and, and storytelling and just how intense that is. So I want to wait until I'm in the right headspace to watch it because I know what's going to happen in that story and I know what to expect. And it's uh, very um, intense for anyone who's read the story. I did a, a video about it, actually. Um, where I called it one of the most horrific uh, comic book stories ever written. Um, so to see it on screen, you know, I, I, I need to be in a spot where, A, I don't have kids around. I don't want my young kids to see it if it's that intense. But I also want uh, to, to really uh, absorb it. Now, the series so far has been really good. Really, really good. And it's really amazing that they've translated that material, which is very hard to translate, into something really, really, I think, great. And the changes they made make sense. And again, you can't have everything be the same. Uh, I'm not a fan. Uh, originally, when I first watched the series, I wasn't a fan of the Corinthian being kind of like the strand holding it all together. I understood Corinthian's a cool character, um, but you know, I got it after watching it because TV has to have different beats and it has to have more to tie together. You know, you gotta remember that the book series itself, a lot of times these were stories that didn't, um, weren't linear storytelling. They didn't fall into each other. So there had to be some device to kind of hold it all together. And I think they figured that out through that character. Um, next up, I want to talk about just briefly, just because I think it was so funny. Um, it was, um, you know, She-Hulk and I watched the trailer and, um, I want to just kind of, if I can find something here, you know, to look at, um, you know, yeah, like this, like the CGI in this, um, trailer looks so bad. It looks more like the polar express, you know, characters than it does like a live action, uh, Marvel series. So, just from that alone, I don't even care about the rest of the series because it just looks so bad from the trailer. So, you know, it could be a great series. It could not be, but man, it just looks terrible. Um, next up, before I get into my predictions and, uh, and, and uh, collecting goals, is I just want to, you know, put it out there that uh, one of my favorite bands of all time, King Buffalo, um, is coming out the new album. If you're into heavy music, if you're into rock music, uh, Pink Floyd, uh, I call them like a heavier Pink Floyd. Um, uh, check out King Buffalo. Um, they're on tour right now. They're coming to Buffalo, New York, actually. They're Troy, New York. I'm in New York, so that's why it's important to me. Um, but but please, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a paid member. This is not me, you know, getting any money for this. I'm just a huge fan of King Buffalo. I like to grow their audience for anyone who likes hard rock music. But if you ever listen to my videos, I the background music in 90% of my videos is King Buffalo. So it's just so you know, if you're ever wondering 
what some of my background music was, uh, intro music and stuff. It's either King Buffalo or it's songs I've either written, some music I've written myself, or like some very funny songs I, I throw at the end, like I, I pit, like Kelly Watch the Stars at the very end of most of my videos now. Um, so, uh, but yeah, so just if you like heavy music, please check out King Buffalo. Um, so on to the hobby um, predictions and uh, price corrections video, <laughs> which is what the first thing is. But yeah, the prediction. So prediction one, prices was going to go down. Obviously, that was the pretty safe bet for anyone to make that. I do think it's interesting to show the cards I was kind of picking on. Kabooms, PMGs, the card like the stupid LeBron stunt card. I mean, these were very easy for someone who's been in the hobby a long time to, to just predict that you know second year cards uh pmgs dunk cards uh kabooms you know kabooms i don't know if they've gone down quite as much as i thought they would but they definitely have gotten less hot as they keep producing more of them and you know so those are things that you know to me have gone down now young guns uh haven't really seen a huge market correction they've seen some on the some players but like kel mccars uh is gone nuts so like it, it's not every card so uh, you know, Young Guns, I would say, is still priced pretty high compared to what it was. Uh, so second prediction, um, if we can get the, I'm trying not to play the video. It's just kind of moving slow. Um, you know, there's going to be consolidation, right? So we did see that. And that, and that was, again, I don't think a very hard prediction. But you've seen where Fanatics has acquired Tops. Um, you see where, you know, Fanatics is now, or Tops is cutting out some of the, um, some of the, uh, um, you know, um, in between guys, you know, the, um, card brokers, so to speak. Um, so those guys are getting cut out. Uh, you see blowout on this list here, Dave and Adam. So it's still, all this is still happening. Still very, very much, um, you know, a, a fluid, um, situation. I think there's going to be more, uh, consolidation, um, you know, as things go, but yeah, you know, Fanatics will buy brands and or license it from other companies. They you know they they bought top. So uh not a tough prediction, but you know, at least I was right on that. Um so prediction number three. Again, you know, I'm just gonna go through here is um, you know, collaboration. So we used to keep cards cool. Again, I think it's a little early on this, but you know, I you know, we saw Steve Aoki, he was at the national. Um we're seeing breaks, you know, with, with we, you know, we saw breaks with some real famous folks, um, you know, um, Drake, you know, you, you know, you're, you're seeing this. I do think fanatics, you know, has put the game plan out there. Luber has said over and over that, that they want to make breaking an event. So they're either going to partner with the fun breakers, the backyard break kind of guys, the guys doing skits, you know, whenever they break, you know, cards and hit, hit something. Guys who, you know, for, for whatever reason, you know, people like because of, you know, they, they have an entertainment factor. And then it's going to be like people with some sort of like status, you know, in the hobby or status somewhere else, breaking stuff. And so I, I do think what we're seeing is that when, when Fanatics finally gets this all kind of figured out, they're, they're not going to just give anyone a chance to buy and break cards. They're going to really control it. They want to have entertaining, uh, you know, either in, entertainers or people who are just part of this entertainment industry, um, breaking product and, and driving people to buy uh, because it's like, oh, I get a chance to be in the break with, you know, this athlete or this celebrity. And I think that's going to be the model for a lot of the really high-end stuff. So... I think that's still something that's going to happen. And I think we're seeing the groundwork being laid right now. Uh, prediction four. So I think all three are still relevant. Prediction four. Um, you know, eBay becoming less relevant to the hobby. Um, I still think this is a, a work in progress. I think Fanatics is going to be the biggest push on this. I think PWCC has made their play. I think whatnot, all, all these other, you know, um, you know, um, I, I think there's like a card shop live. I mean, all these places are going to continue to push into this space. I think eBay is hurting itself with its fees. It's, um, it's program to, to review, uh, cards and slabs, which is delaying cards, you know, shipping in cards. Uh, it seems like a, a, a non-value added you know, program that's eventually going to be part of their fee structure. So again, all this shows me that eBay is still going to lose relevancy in the hobby. 
Um, but you know, these new platforms are kind of all stagnant in my opinion. None of them has made a huge play. We're seeing in the last golden auction cards aren't bringing as much as they were. Um, you know, some of them, you know, are, are now at record lows compared to previous auctions. So it's all over the place. I think it's still to be determined, but I do think eBay will, you know, market share will continue to erode as these new places become more viable. I think it's still a very slow process. So I, I think, you know, if I thought eBay was going to be losing, you know, tons of market share quickly, that's not happening. Uh, definitely not happening. Now, you know, here's like predictions that, you know, things that might become things. You know, I said that, you know, we're going to see other forms of uh, media turn into cards. So anime, books, movies, uh, music and games. I think this is all very relevant. I think that they're going to look at turning any property into cards. We just saw Stranger Things get turned into cards. I think, you know, hot anime. I think Dune could be a card set. I mean, could you imagine if Dune was a card set? You know, and he, and he had all the famous actors. I mean, my gosh, there's, there's you know, a ton of great actors in, in that movie. Um, you know, um, so, like, there, it's out there, right? It, and, and I think it's going to happen. I think you're going to see these hot properties turned into cards. And we're seeing that with Stranger Things. Um, I talked about, you know, um, the, the refractors and prisms for goats will become ultra hand. I think that really took off and came back down a little bit. That was one of the price corrections that happened in the year. Um, and so I think it's still going to be big because I collect Griffey and Griffey refractors are still way up compared to where they were two years ago. Uh, even a year ago, some of them were way up. So it just depends on the player. But yes, I do, I do think refractors are still considered high-end cards compared to what it was a couple of years ago. Um, so yeah, I think on that... Um, Again, you know, the 90s inserts will go up and, again, be copied. I think Fanatics is going to be the one copying these kind of things because they, they understand nostalgia. They talk about, you know, um, you know, Exquisite and having those old brands back. But, yeah, you know, the Jambalaya's credentials are continuing to go up. We're seeing it, you know, at the National. We saw, I saw because I pay attention to, like, 90s inserts of baseball and football. So Barry Sanders a lot of those really hard to get inserts gone way up. I saw a, um, you know, um, a couple really high end uh, King Griffey Jr. cards sell for seven and ten thousand dollars. I saw a um, 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 the Man Refractor uh, Jeter for ten thousand dollars. So again, these really cool high end inserts, uh, refractors in that case, that refractor was uh, the, the the Man Refractor, uh, Centurion refractors. You know, those things have gone skyrocketing out, out into the orbit. And I don't think they're going to come down. There's just not enough of them. That's the one thing that's different about those cards compared to some other cards. Even linchpins and the cut aboves and the non-numbered cards. Just low amount of them for the Griffey, Jeter, uh, Barry Sander collectors out there. I do feel like those are going to be something that stays hot and stays up. So... I think that is all um, realistic. And um, and then I talked about some things that um, was, um, you know, things that, again, could be you know, speculated on, new co uh, collectible card games. Um, you know, I think they've gone very flat and stagnant. Uh, but I definitely, uh, some of these things I talked about haven't become a thing. Cricket was talked about, again, uh, I, I was on the live stream with... Um, Sports card live when he had um, Brian Gray of Leaf, and they actually talked about cricket cards. Uh, so, you know, I, I think cricket cards could be a thing, but it's not yet. Um, but, you know, I got Gremlins on here. I, I view Gremlins like, you know, Stranger Things. So, you know, movie cards, anime cards, again, you know, are things that could come back big time. Uh, non traditional sports, like, again, talk about, you know, cricket, rugby. Um, and then great tickets and magazines to me have had their day. I was at the National and no one was really excited about tickets and magazines. I think it was just a short spec and it's already kind of back down. So that was a thing and now it's not a thing as much as it was. So that's my, you know, so I think I was pretty close. I would give myself like a, like a B minus on my speculation because I got some things right, especially the easy stuff, you know, that, the stuff that was really easy to, to figure out. Some of the stuff that's, happening but it's happening slower than i thought it might 
But again, you know, it's a prediction. It's like, is it going to happen in 22? Is it going to happen in 23? I do think the way the hobby is moving, though, a lot of my predictions will eventually come true. I, I honestly think so. But right now, you know, I give myself like a B minus. Now for my hobby collecting goal. So, um, you know, the first thing I talked about was Willie Mays. And I really talked about 50s Willie Mays. I don't have a lot of 50s cards. In fact, I own, I believe, um, one 50s Mays card. Um, so very much, you know, to say I'm going to actually have a Mays collection and only have one card from, you know, I have a 57 Willie Mays. Um, you know, um, that's, that's it. And so to, to only have one card is pretty, um, pretty bad in my opinion, because I'm trying to collect them all. Now I did solve some of that at the national was I got this 59 maze. It's a really nice card. It's a PSA eight. So I did add to my maze collection, something really nice from the fifties. So now I have two really nice fifties maze cards. Um, so I'm slowly getting those back. Um, I predict that I might uh, get one more maze card, um, um, you know, this year, um, from the fifties, but you know, they're so expensive now and, and, and it's so fairly hard to find, um, you know, that's just going to be it. But I, I do think I might be able to have one more in me. You know, I think the card that I can most likely get, um, and for me is probably the 55 Bowman. That's the one I'm really targeting. So Hopefully I can get the 55 Bowman. That's the one I really want to get. I think I can get it. I think price wise, it's coming down some. So, so I'm targeting, I did get one on card auto. I got the 62 tops team reprint auto on card auto. Uh, that's been in some of my video. So I did, I also got an autograph as well. Um, uh, moving on into comic books, which, you know, I know a lot of people don't care about, but I do collect a lot of comic books. So Sp Spidey man, Spider man, Spidey man. <laughs> For one through ten, I have none. I collected zero of these, so a big goose egg on this one. Um, I tried, looked at them. I have been um, really um, reluctant to pull the trigger on on Spider-Man books. I kind of feel like they went up way, way too expensive, and I'm actually most likely looking to add more something like a, that was ungraded for now and, and find a nice raw couple copies of, of, in this range because I just feel like it's it's gotten so high that it's just not um, you know to me they're they're they were overpriced they're coming down a little bit but you know it's just some are up some are down it's like you know I want it to be a little more stable before I really get into the uh, and, and, and really invest in, in some of these early Spider-Man keys. Um, pretty much all keys at this point when you're this early. Um, so there's that. I have one book. I have the first Sandman. Um, so I think it's like seven or six. I, I always forget the numbering. But, you know, I, I have one Spider-Man book in the, in the first ten. Uh, and I want to get at least one more. Do I think it's going to happen this year? Whew, I would give it 50-50 that I'll pick up. I think... I have a better chance of picking up a fifties maze than I do of a, of a Spider-Man one through 10. And that's just because, you know, uh, availability and pricing and all that just are lining up that. I don't think I'm going to be able to get one this year for what I want to pay. Um, Ken Griffey Jr. Now this was definitely one where I really, um, I, I I've definitely done a good job <laughs> on this one. So I really have, Nailed the pre-2000 or Mariners jersey Griffey's. I've gotten tons of, I mean, from the last national pickups, I've got, you know, the Crusade, which is numbered. I've got, you know, my Diamond Soul, which isn't numbered, but, you know, autos. You know, I've got, you know, multiple autos, this auto, this auto. Um, you know, I've got, um, you know, the uh, SP Signature auto. So, again... Just tons and tons of, you know, Griffey cards that I picked up, I think are just amazing. Now, as far as what I have on here, you know, I haven't picked up a single card that's on this screen. Now, of course, the the, the gold uh, embossed die cut is a grail card. But I do feel like I will get the 94 Finest and the Showcase this year. I think those two cards are definitely in, to, in, the, um, in the cards. Now... I don't have it on here because I never thought I would get one because the Crusade, which is 
one of my favorite cards of all time. Um, I just didn't think I would ever find one at a show uh, because they're so just, they're locked up in so many collections. But the Crusade to me is only on this list, you know, below that, um, um, the, the, the finest gold um, die cut. I'm not a fan of the Mantle Griffey Auto anymore because of all the aftermarket Griffey, um, you know, um, addition. So a lot of people were taking the Mantle, the, the Mantle by itself and added the Griffey signature uh, and, a, and a live auto or maybe fudged it. Um, but that's kind of ruined that card for me a little bit because a lot of them have after market or after pack out Griffey autos added to them. And to me, that's not what I want. I want one that was pack issued and to have an aftermarket uh, just kind of ruins the card. But people don't realize it and they pay a ton of money. They're paying like $8,000 for uh, a Mando Griffey auto or the Griffey was just signed recently. So to me, that card is a little bit ruined in that perspective. So it's it's gone down on my list. Um, so... But yeah, I do feel like I can get the 94 Finest uh, and the Hot Gloves. They come up for sale quite frequently. They, they're they not ten, five, or even $2,000 cards. So they're something I could probably get and afford and pick up this year. So, But I definitely have focused on Griffey inserts this year, and I feel like I've done a great job there and, and, and further my collection. Uh, Schomburg and LB Cole, I have picked up multiple Schomburg and Cole books this year. Um, so, yeah, it, it is... Um, you know, Cole and, uh, and uh, Schomburg, um, you know, a, a huge focus. No, but I they're so hard to get and so expensive. But I have picked up major books from each, each one, in my opinion. You know, I've picked up really nice copies of, of, of Captain America books. Uh, but no, it's a Marvel, um, you know, uh, mystery book. Um, and um, a, a really nice Cole uh, horror book. Um, so I have picked up some Schomburg and Cole books. So, you know, I said add two to three Schomburg Timely books. I've added um, uh, one. So I, you know, I, do I think I can find another one? Sure. I, I, they're, they come up for sale. They come up for auction. So I don't think I'm going to uh, not uh, be able to pick up one of those books, uh, you know, to get two to three um, and to get another LB Cole. LB Cole is a lot cheaper uh, and I can definitely pick up some LB Cole books. So. Definitely going to have this kicked off on the list. So I think this one will, will definitely be uh, achievable. Uh, next up is, let's see here. Goat Football Refractors. Yeah, I, I have definitely uh, looked at this. And so this started out as getting Goat Refractors. Um, and, you know, I've got one here. I, I can kind of dig out. But, you know, I, I, I picked up some like Brett Favre. I picked up some Dan Marino. Um, Barry Sanders, but I'm really, really focused on now Barry Sanders. I've uh, just narrowed it down and I was like, you know, trying to get everyone, you know, you know, Jerry Rice, Peyton Manning. But I just said, look, I like Barry Sanders. Like he was the badass, the best player of his time, in my opinion. So I'm just going to focus on Barry Sanders. And so I have picked up some really nice Barry Sanders cards some refractors. And then in the last, um, you know, um, you know, at the National, I picked up, you know, the, um, you know, Crusade. So that's definitely, to me, as cool as a refractor. or It's a very similar card. Uh, so, yeah, you know, like, I have, um, I have, you know, I felt like I have really furthered my uh, Barry Sanders collection. I picked up a Atomic Die Cut Bowman's Best Cut, you know, recently as well. So, you know, I think that's what's kind of morphed into just a Barry Sanders collection. But I do have Dan Marino, Brett Favre, some Peyton Manning refractors, uh, Aaron Rodgers refractors I picked up. So I definitely think I have uh, furthered this collection quite a bit. And the focus on Sanders definitely has moved uh, the needle quite a bit there. So I think this one is definitely one I've improved on. Uh, Native American collection. Um, I actually picked up that book on the far right, the Target uh, book there. Um, but this is something I, I definitely feel is a void. I have picked up um, some um, Danny Moonstar cards and comic books, but you know I haven't got any 33 Indian Gum cards. I have not picked up any Chief Bender cards, except for the one I got graded. So I did grade a raw Chief Bender card that I've had in my collection for a long time. That was the Old Mill Back uh, T206. So 
you saw my uh, PSA return video, that came back. Um, so that theoretically added a, a new chief bender to my collection because it was sitting in my raw pile <clears throat> for the last couple years. And I finally got it graded. So it felt good to get that card back in a PSA holder. So that's going to go into the chief bender collection. So that sort of feels like I've added something, but in reality, that card was just in a, in a raw state. So I didn't really add a card theoretically. So yes, um, on the chief bender side, definitely a big goose egg on the 33 um, Indian gum cards. Um, I definitely uh, need to focus there. So that's one area I can focus on because again, um, now that I'm in more of a budget mode, those are the cards you can pick up in budget. And Echo, you know, um, I actually have this cover that's right here, um, but I need to pick up her first appearance because, you know, she's going to have a movie. Um, I just feel like Echo is something I should definitely have the first appearance of for sure. Um, so that's something I'm going to work on. So do I think I'll get a Chief Bender card, some 33 Gaudi gun cards, and Echo's first appearance? I'm going to say there's a pretty darn good chance all four of these uh, will be checked off on my list. So I feel like this is going to be something I am going to work on in the last half, last half of the year because to me they also are more value plays and that's what I'm looking for. That's the way it's the Barry Sanders collection as well. You know, I don't have to spend as much money uh, to, to further those collections and I feel like that's something I can definitely do uh, to make my collection uh, make sense. Um, so yeah, there you go. That was the, you know, like the top six goals I had. Uh, I don't know why I didn't do five, but it's six. Um so there you go. I, I'm some things I'm good on. Uh, I definitely have not, uh, you know, um, um, done the Spider-Man books. I definitely uh, only picked up one maze card from the fifties. Um, you know, so I'd say I'm big, you know, goose egg on Spider-Man. I haven't picked up a lot of native American stuff besides Danny Moonstar stuff. Um, so, you know, it's kind of in between there. So yeah, you know, I got some work to do, but this is why I did it. This video was to show kind of like, hey, you know, I set out at the beginning of the year to collect certain things. Some things I'm dead on, like Griffey, dead on. Barry Sanders, Refractor Collection, pretty good. Uh, Native American Collection, eh, a little lagging. Uh, Alex Schomburg, LB Cole, kind of halfway there. So, you know, overall, I'm probably, I give myself like a C, you know, um, you know, B, B minus C plus on this side of it, just because, you know, there's a lot of low hanging fruit there. I can go pick up from a collection perspective. So that's what I'm going to look at. So there it is guys. That's where I'm at. Uh, my predictions, uh, review from January, my review of where I'm at for my hobby collection. And, uh, there we go. And I think at the end of the year, what I want to do is I want to showcase, uh, everything I picked up that I set out to do. So I'll show off all my Sanders and and refractors and Griffey cards and just have kind of a, a recap for how I move these collections forward at the end of the year. Right now I'm like, you know, in the middle of, of, of everything. And uh, so hopefully I can move this stuff forward, have a good video at the end of the year showing I, I did move some of these collections forward and uh, made them, uh, you know, uh, more fun because this is the fun stuff I like to collect. Uh, and so I would have had a lot of fun collecting it. So I'll be really excited to show it off. So. There it is, guys. Hope you had fun. Hope you liked my update, uh, my my mid-year kind of review. And I'll uh, see you next time on Cards and Comics. Bye.